Thank you so much for joining me today on Just Praise Him Radio. I'm your host, Glenda Lomax, and my job is to inspire you to a closer walk with Christ. Now here's the show. Hello, believers. Welcome to the Just Praise Him radio program. I'm your host, Glenda Lomax, and the title of my message today is, This is an all-prophetic show for February 26th through March 11th, 2023. This show is going to have to do double duty for last weekend this week because I've been a little bit under the weather for some days, and and y'all probably knew that when you saw me post-repost on weekdays for words for two days straight, but Uh, And I'm still trying to unpack my house. And (laughs) it's so bad when you move because your stuff is everywhere. And whenever I have to do something that's really important, like I get to pay my bills or do something like that, I'm running all over the house like a chicken with my head cut off, trying to find everything to do that task. And I tried to pack so carefully. But there you have it. So I really, really need to get my house sorted out. Please pray for me. I don't move so fast as I used to, and this house is larger, and so it takes me longer to walk back and forth. It just seems like it's taken forever. But okay, let's get into the show. Um, I hope this is a blessing to you. For anyone who has not listened to one of the All Prophetic shows before, I want to explain to you how to know if one of the words is for you. If when you hear me, read the word, even if it has a name attached to it, or if it says this is for a woman or this is for a man or whatever, um, that doesn't matter. If you feel like that word is speaking to you, if you, when you hear the word, if it feels like God is speaking to you, then that word is also for you. One word is usually for many people. Okay. Take what you feel is for you and run with it. Okay, there is a man listening to this that you've been working on a business startup. It's a business venture you are truly interested in, and you feel it is a good investment of your time and money. The Lord wants you to know, sir, that that business may look good, but it will not turn out good, and he has something far better for you that will not fail. If you are willing to lay down your plan and take his up, he will reveal all to you. Just ask him. Proverbs 16, 9 says, A man's heart devises his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Oftentimes when God has a different plan for us, we may be sad that it's not the plan that we thought we wanted, but then he always knows what we need, not just what we want. Okay, there's a young woman listening to this. I think you are under 30. You have blondish hair just below your shoulders in length. You have suffered a lot of abuse in your life. You still suffer even now from the abuse that you suffered in early childhood. The Lord wants you to know that he sees your pain. He sees how you suffer with that and that the abuse was not his will for you. It was Satan's will that was carried out through people who were subject to the demons that Satan sent because they were not walking with the Lord. The Lord says he is willing to heal you so completely that you will never suffer another minute over that if you are willing to do two things. Number one, forgive those who abused you, all of them without any apologies or com- from them or confrontations with them. You have to outright just forgive them from your heart. You just say, okay, I'm going to give it up. And number two, you have to give the abuse and using the abuse to get attention and special treatment from people to him and never, ever bring it up in conversation with anyone again. He is asking you now, are you willing to be made whole or would you prefer to glory in the abuse and the attention it brings you for the rest of your life? The choice is yours and you need to make that choice within three days of hearing this if you want to be made whole, if you want to be healed. John 5 Verses 6 and 7, when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another steps down before me. Okay, there's someone listening to this podcast that you are very spiteful, including towards people who really love you deeply. 
You have a vein full of pride running through your heart, and you are not fighting against it. Spitefulness comes out of pride. Pride is the what about me spirit that all it can think about is me, 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 and me some more. The Lord wants you to know that spitefulness in a person who calls themselves a Christian forces him to do more refining of that person. The rules are the same for everybody. Because you are so prideful in this way, you will be led into a desert season where people, comforts, and things will be taken from you. You will be humbled, then you will be tested again to see if the attitudes in your heart are still spite, pettiness, and pride. It is up to you. You have left him no choice. He is showing me this is a continual attitude with you, meaning that is how you think all the time and that he will not let it continue. I am being shown no matter how many wilderness journeys it requires, that's how many you are going on. Proverbs 16, 18 says, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Okay, there is a man listening to this. You are in love with a woman who is not returning your love. She's not a very virtuous woman and she is not a believer in Christ. Sir, the Lord says to tell you that is not the woman he has for you. If you marry her, You are following your own plan, not his, and you will be given over to that plan. It will not be pretty how it turns out. He says she will make your life a misery. It is your choice. He does have someone for you. She is a little bit plainer in the face, but her heart is amazingly beautiful, and she will make you a very good wife if you go with the Lord's plan. Not only that, but there are other rewards if you marry her as well. She is going to come into quite a bit of money not too long from now. She does not know this. She is also from a good family who will offer you opportunities when you join the family. In short, she is the one you will be happy with, although right now you cannot imagine being happy with anyone but the woman you have fallen in love with. You must choose which woman you want. If you stay with the one you have, he will give the better one to another. If you accept the one he has for you, Then you must give up the one you want now, stay completely away from her, cut off all contact, and devote yourself to his word. The other woman, the better one, is believing for a man who knows and loves the word of God. Make your choice. Okay, there is someone listening to this. I think you are a female. You do not have a large, steady income, and you have been trying to believe, to have faith for more, to have enough and more than enough, but it does not appear to be working. The Lord says to tell you that he is very proud of you for being willing to stand on your faith and believe him. And he says, if you will let go, and that means of the problem situation of not having enough, that he will bring the increase. You are still trying to figure out how to increase your income. I think you have two children to support and you are sad they do not have everything they need. He is willing, woman of God. He is more than willing. Let him carry this. If you are looking at part-time jobs and side hustles, you are not releasing it to him. Be still and know that he is God. He won't let you down. I'm going to say a prayer for you too. And one more thing. I see a bright and very happy future for you. I see bright sunshine and very big smiles. I don't know what it is God has planned for you, but it is really good. Your breakthrough is on the way the second you release that problem to him. Be still and know that he is God. Okay, there is someone listening to this podcast that you are on a path and you are sure you are on the right path. You do believe in the Lord, but the Lord does not have all of your heart. You feel like you have given up a lot along the journey and I see you with your nose stuck up in the air, which symbolizes pride. You have kind of been walking on other people's feelings because you are so sure of your righteousness. You have kind of an I'm above you kind of attitude. I think you're a male, but I'm not certain. The Lord says to you, get your attitude right or I will help you get it right. This is said most sternly. You you have nothing I did not give you and I can remove it as quickly as it was given. I desire humility in my people. Your attitude is not pleasing to me. If you continue on your current path, you will meet with destruction. What you have will be removed. You will lose abilities to do things. If that is what you want, stay on the path you are on. 
Okay, I'm being shown this particular word that I'm about to say is for at least five different people. I don't know if you're males, females, or a mixture. I am being shown an end-time transfer of wealth to five people at least. These are five different transfers. There are five very wealthy people who are going to be instructed to transfer the bulk of their wealth to these five individuals. The Lord says the first thing you do when you receive it is you tithe and offer on it, and he wants gratitude offerings included in that. So if you believe you are one of these five, make a mental note. This is very important. Because remember, he can take it away just as fast as he gave it. The next thing he wants you to know is there are three places each of you are supposed to give large amounts, and these are amounts over 100000 each. They are ministries, but they are small ministries. None of them are large ministries. The Lord says all of these ministries are going to give him great glory for these tithes and offerings. Now, see, what will happen is when you receive the transfer of wealth, go immediately to your prayer closet and ask the Lord, okay, Lord, where do you want me to tithe and offer? And where are the three ministries? Who are the three ministries to give to? So you be sure that you comply with what he's saying, okay? Because this is all conditional. After that, he expects you to continue to give generously to ministries, preaching his true word and to help the poor at all times. If you fail to do that, the wealth will quickly dissipate. It'll just like vanish into air. If you obey, the wealth will last and even increase, and he will continue to bless you. Okay. I was working on a sermon that was going to be for last week, but turned out not to be the Lord's will. And I was writing about reaping what you sow when you speak wrong words and tell lies about others and not living a life of regret when I got this word. There is a woman listening to this that you just don't think that you are wrong when you do those things and you do not believe you will reap any such thing. For you and anyone else that think they are so anointed and so special and so pretty and so wealthy that you never do anything wrong and you think you won't reap, when we get closer to the end, you need to brace for impact because our God is not ever mocked, okay? And it's all going to come back on you. It will. Everything we have done will come back on every one of us, not just you, all of us. And by the way, it comes back even if you have repented. Years ago, when I was at the townhouse in Princeton, something negative was happening. I can't remember what it was anymore, but I could not make it stop. I tried everything I knew. And um, I began praying about what was going on. And the Lord showed me a time in the past when I had done something and I was reaping for it. And he showed me that I was reaping. I was like, okay. I said, Lord, I repented for that at length. And all I got back was silence. So this is apparently a spiritual law. So just know that you will reap whatever you have sown over the years for good or ill. And that's a word for all of us. Okay, someone listening to this podcast has written a book and had it published or published it themselves. Not a lot has happened with it yet. And you're kind of disappointed about that. You felt like the Lord told you great things were going to happen with it. The Lord says to you, it is not the book that will cause those things to happen, but the people I bring you into contact with as you are out speaking about the book. And I see you talking about the book as you teach biblical principles. I don't know where this is going to happen. And the Lord brings a man he has spoken to, to one of those talks, and this starts the whole ball rolling. And he says, everything I have spoken to you is true. You just... You had an idea of how it would happen, and it's not going to happen that way. I have an even better plan that you know than what you know. And when I'm done, you will never want for anything all your life, and you will be loved by many people. For I know the thoughts I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of great peace, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. That's Jeremiah 29, 11. Okay, there's someone listening to this that you have suffered a great deal of sickness in your life. You are to the point now that you feel defeated by it because it just goes on and on and on. I think you may have been diagnosed with some type of disease that has caused all of that illness throughout the years. I think you may be a male, but I'm not sure. You have had a few thoughts lately of just ending your life because you are so tired of suffering. The Lord wants you to know he sees you. He has not abandoned you or forsaken you. He sees your suffering. And that is most definitely not his will for you. He says emphatically, that is not my will for you, my son. He wants you to right now start rebuking every pain and every symptom that comes at you. 
He wants you to rebuke every sickness that tries to set in. Answer every single thing with the scripture from his word. He says, if you will do this and keep doing it, even in the face of attacks of more that the enemy is going to send at you when you do, I will show you that it's not my will for you. I will heal you completely. I will answer your faith, but you have to stand on it and not back down for even one second. Set your face like flint and run towards your healing with every word that comes out of your mouth. Start today. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. That's Isaiah 41.10. There's a young woman listening to this. I think you're about 25, but I'm not sure. You have never been a real pretty woman. You've always just looked kind of plain. You have or had a pretty sister. And as you watched on how everyone loved her and favored her, you wondered what it would be like to be that pretty and be loved. But you have spent your time well as you did not spend it in the social world of parties and such. You have spent it learning, studying, and improving yourself in other ways. The Lord has a gift for you, woman of God. He is going to impart beauty to you. It will come suddenly, and it will be very apparent to all who see you. So you will get to find out what it feels like to be pretty and to be loved. But there is one caveat. The Lord says, do not at any time use your beauty to do evil or commit sins, or he will take it away from you. Who's adorning? Let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. That's 1 Peter 3, 3 and 4. There is someone listening to this podcast that you have a very cold and hardened heart towards, well, everybody. You kind of believe in God, but not very strongly. I don't know if you tuned into this podcast yourself or you're hearing it accidentally, but the Lord wants you to know you think you're going to heaven because you've done a lot of good things for a lot of people, and it's good to do good works and things like that. Even though you do good works, I do not see any real kindness in your heart. The Lord wants you to know that good works will not get you into heaven. There is no way into heaven without believing in Jesus, and that's real belief. Unless you believe and believe with all your heart, that door will be closed to you on Judgment Day. It will be closed in your face. And once you are there and not here, there is nothing you can do to change that. But you still have time to change it while you are here by believing and serving the one true God. The Lord wants you to concentrate on believing Him, not doing good works. You cannot earn your way into heaven. You can get to know Him by studying and listening to His Word, and even by talking to people who know Him well. You can confirm what they tell you through His Word. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. That's John 3.36. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14.6. You know, back when I first got saved in 1996, I didn't know a thing. (laughs) I knew less than nothing. I think I knew maybe two scriptures. Uh, given it shall be given unto you, you know, something like that. And I didn't really, you know, I tried to read the Bible, but you don't understand any of the Bible when you first start to read it. You know, you can know everything in all the books in the world and have not a drop of wisdom because wisdom starts with fearing the Lord and understanding he is real and he can stomp on you real quick if you're out of line. So I started listening to sermons because I couldn't read and understand. I thought, well, maybe if I listen to preaching, then that'll make sense. The word of God is so powerful that it is locked up until God sees you're serious. When he sees you're serious, which it with me was about a year later, he'll unlock it. I listened to uh, Joyce Meyer because she made me laugh. And her teaching was simple enough that I could digest it. And I 
started to understand some, you know, more about the Bible stories and biblical principles and stuff like that. And God will move you from teacher to teacher to teacher. I listened to her for, I don't know, maybe a year and a half when I was just starting out. And then he moved me to someone else. I want to say Andrew Womack. And then I listened to them for a while. And then he'd move me to somebody else. I listened to them. He moves you to whatever teacher has what you need next. If you will just find someone you enjoy listening to that teaches the word of God, preferably somebody that doesn't teach something that's out of line, and you'll have to ask someone else about that, then you can start to learn the word. And then when you open the Bible, things will start to make more sense because you'll go, oh, I remember, you know, that person teaching on this or whatever. If you want to try to just read the Bible, Proverbs are very easy to understand. Um, Let's see what else. Proverbs, to me, is the easiest book to understand because there are sayings about wisdom. And there's so much wisdom just in that book. And there are 31 chapters of Proverbs, so you can read a chapter a day. So you could start there. Okay, we're almost done here. I have one last word. There's a woman listening to this show that your life does not consist of much. You do the same things every day. Life goes on, but you're just going through the motions and wondering why that is all that your life consists of. The Lord says to you, woman of God, that you are missing the best part of life. He says you have kind of followed everyone else's expectations of what your life should be. And now you're not very content with the result. He wants you to know that he is the best part of life and he is calling you into a close, intimate walk with him that you are going to find very exciting. In fact, I see you full of joy when this walk begins and really happy and excited about your life. You begin the journey by going into prayer for long periods each day where you just seek his face, you know, ask him what, you know, what he wants you to do and things like that. And you adore him. You tell him how wonderful he is. That's worship. Then he said unto them, go your way, eat the fat and drink the sweet and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared For this day is holy unto our Lord, neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's Nehemiah 8.10. Okay, that's all I have for y'all today. I apologize this took so long to get out to you. Hopefully I'm back to normal very soon so this does not happen again. I'm sure I will be. Do not forget that JPH has a new address now. If you send mail to the Glencoe, Arkansas P.O. Box, it will most likely come back to you. I've been told that mail is being sent back to senders. JPH's new address is P.O. Box 854 Altus, that's A-L-T-U-S, Oklahoma 73522. I hope you have a week of joy, peace, and blessings in all you do. Keep the Lord at the forefront of your thoughts. I hope you have a week of joy, peace, and blessings in all you do. Keep the Lord at the forefront of your thoughts. Jesus bless you. Thanks for listening. Y'all have a great week. Bye now. Thank you so much for tuning in today to Just Praise Him Radio. I hope this has inspired you to a closer walk with Christ. You can contact me by mail at my new address, JPH Inc., P.O. Box 854, Altus, Oklahoma. That's A-L-T-U-S, Oklahoma 73. 73- 522 or by email at wings of prophecy at gmail.com. JPH is not affiliated with any nonprofit organization, church, or denomination. Does your life feel like it's falling apart around you? Are multiple things going wrong all at once? Does it seem all your comforts have been stripped away? you may have entered the wilderness. Wilderness experiences are oftentimes of great discomfort and lack. Every Christian must pass through the desert on the way to their promised land. Find out how to go from surviving to thriving by partnering with God as He leads you in the path that will strengthen your faith and prepare you to step into your destiny. The Wilderness Companion will help you find out why you have been led into the wilderness. Find out the biggest hindrances to receiving the provision you need in the wilderness. Find out what the seven temptations of the wilderness are. Learn how to partner with God in His purposes for you in the desert seasons. Get your copy of The Wilderness Companion today. 
The Wilderness Companion by Glenda Lomax on Amazon.com in print, Kindle, or audiobook. If you ask anyone you know what the most difficult experience of their life has been, many will answer about a time of betrayal. All those called to walk the narrow path will at some point encounter Judas. How will you respond? Do you know how to recognize Judas when he shows up in your life? Can you keep Judas from bringing destruction to your life and ministry? How can you minimize what Judas cost you? Can you pass the test of absolute betrayal? Get your copy of The Judas Test, available in print and new audiobook, The Judas Test by Glenda Lomax, available now on Amazon.com. Sold out for 30 pieces of silver? In Exodus 21:32, it is the price of a dead slave. In Leviticus 27, 2-7, it is the price of a live one. Jesus was sold for the price of a bondservant. Precious Jesus, the Son of God, the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings, why did Judas sell his friend out so cheap?